reality, there's a lot of concern about adverts for junk food and there's calls to have them banned. Um, it's just kind of difficult with the world of, of social media and uh, our television schedules changing. But one former ad man is proposing that we fight fire with fire. Dan Parker used to work with McDonald's and Coca-Cola and he's planning a new campaign extolling the virtues of veg. Um, and he joins me now to tell us more. Good morning, Dan. Good morning. Good morning. Now, so you're now with um, what is called the Food Foundation. Um, and you're a bit of a poacher turned gamekeeper, are you? Or a gamekeeper turned poacher? I don't know how that would work. I think I'm a poacher turned gamekeeper. I, I spent 20 years working in advertising with, with the, the big players in junk food and fizzy drinks. And then I, I got a slap in the face in the form of type 2 diabetes. Gave me a bit of a wake up call. And uh, I, so I, I closed down my business and stopped doing that kind of work and decided I would spend the rest of my time seeing if I could uh, use my skills to communicate a more positive message. And so what are you proposing now? Well, for the Food Foundation, with partners such as Nourish Scotland, have launched a project called Peas Please. Um, Peas Please is about uh, making it easier for people to choose vegetables by working with retailers and food manufacturers and the governments and, and restaurant owners to make veg more available. The other part of this is we're going to make veg more desirable. Right? In particular, we need to inspire our kids. Now, I, I don't know about you, but my, my eight-year-old son, he's pretty much decided he doesn't like a vegetable before it goes into his mouth. Yeah, absolutely. I've got right. a very similar situation in our house. Right, so what we've got to do is we've got to get, get and talk to the kids and we've got to inspire them to be excited about veggies. And at the same time, we've got to support the parents and give them every tip and trick and help that we can give them to help get more veg into our kids. How much of an impact do you think advertising has? Because, you know, having been on the other side of, of this and working for two of the kind of major brands, which many people would put into the, the box of junk food, Maybe you wouldn't, I don't know, but many I people, would. you would, okay, right? Um, you know, so you know what the impact is. Well, absolutely. I mean, these companies spend billions and billions of pounds on advertising in its many different forms. And they have access to incredible amounts of data and lots of very smart people. And they analyze these things and they understand that actually you can change people's behavior through good advertising. That's why it's such a big industry, right? And if we want to, if we want to talk to to kids and get them to engage, we need to use not just advertising in a purest sense, but getting into digital media and social media and the areas where the kids go, and making veg exciting, normalising it in their diet, and and getting them engaged. But you're not going to have billions and billions of pounds, are you? You're not going to have access to, to the data that some of these major, major corporations have. So are you always going to be a kind of David against Goliath? We are definitely going to be a David against Goliath. I mean, currently, only 1.2% of the money that's spent on advertising food is spent on advertising vegetables. So, yes, we are going to be David against Goliath, and we're going to need a pretty good sling if we're going to have a chance of winning. But thankfully, we've got lots of great people rallying around, lots of uh, supporters like Jamie Oliver and Hugh Fernie Whittingstall, and lots of different community groups and local food writers and chefs who are all rallying around to pull our resources, work together, and see if we can get a good, strong message out to the kids. Okay, well, uh, we'll talk about the message in, in a minute. We're also joined by Becca Miller, who's a nutritionist. Morning, Becca. Good morning. Good morning. And Scott McDonald, um, who is a grocer supplier. Good morning to you, Scott. Morning, Kay. Good morning from GM uh, morning. Breckenridge. Um, Becca, do you think it is about making veg exciting? Mm, I think it's a bit more than that. <coughs> Excuse me. I think it's about making it just normal, making it part of our world every single day rather than something special, keeping it all the other way around, all the things that have just been talking about being advertised being your treats and the normal thing that's just part of your everyday life. Make that your veggies. And what do you think the key to doing that, to turning that around is going to be? Because I think for many, many people, um, I'm using junk as a kind of catch-all yeah. term, the, the less nutritious yeah. foods um, have become normal and, and the veg has become the exception. We have got ourselves into that situation. How would you say that we turn that around? Well, even if we start looking at like the old things that we used to do, you remember go to work on an egg, mm -hmm. these sort of advertising things, they made them very healthy change to the to the nation if we start making people think food 
rather than junk with advertising, then maybe the harder sells that veggies can be for people, maybe that's how we get in there and use the kind of role models that kids have in a more positive way and not in a negative way because we don't let well, not let them be attached but you know we don't let the money be attached to the wrong mm. focus for children but do you think advertising is key to this absolutely i was talking to a few people about that i was doing this this morning and i said you know what can you remember from your childhood and I know myself, I can't remember my own phone number, but I could tell you every jingle for the Milky Bar Kid, for, you know, the red car and the blue car, we can all do it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just, you know, maybe not that product that we buy, but it's in us. It's just literally in us, like Christmas carols are in us. And if we have the right things to kind of feed from, then maybe it makes a life life changing difference, not just, you know, th those sorts of products. So what do you think, Scott? Yeah, I mean, I think we need to keep going with the social media aspect. It's a big part of our business is promoting on Facebook. We do loads of uh, promotions on Facebook weekly. We're getting 130,000 shares on Pampers, that kind of thing. And getting, the, the kids is a big aspect of it. We run uh, promotions that are with a guy on Butte Council Schools, and we're getting fruit in there and try to highlight the nutritional information to the parents as well and getting them involved and it seems to be working we're selling more fruit to schools than we ever have so mm. it's definitely something we need to keep promoting i mean is there not an argument to say that actually um you know advertising obviously goes on above our heads and in our homes and you know it's kind of subliminal in, in many kind of ways but at the end of the day with younger children and dan you said you had an eight-year-old and i've got young kids as well it's it's about parents it's about them ignoring those adverts and saying right here we go this is what is for tea you're having chicken peas and a baked potato and we don't do it and if we did dan then maybe we wouldn't have this problem well i think that, i think there's a lot of truth in that i mean where we're at, at the moment is that things are a little bit out of control aren't they we've got so much junk food advertising going on to our kids that we've got our kids being influenced in a way that i don't think is appropriate and there's uh, scotland is actually leading the way on bringing through some new regulations so that actually these companies can't market to our kids and we can return the kind of balance of choice back to the parents where that decision belongs, right? That, that's the first thing. And the second thing we do is we need to empower the parents. We need to make it as easy as possible for them by inspiring the kids. And we also need to share ideas and share knowledge to help parents get the right food inside their kids. So it's all these things coming together, I think. So what are your ideas then? How would you present this? What is going to make veg exciting to kids? Well, I think it's interesting. Uh, Becca had said earlier, earlier about how advertising normalises. And actually, if you look at most advertising, what advertising has done over the years, it's normalised the idea of snacking, and it's normalised the idea of crisps at lunchtime, and it's normalised and normalised thing after thing after thing that's become part of our everyday lives. And what we actually need to do is to normalise the idea of veg in the side, in the minds of children and in, often in the minds of their parents that veg should be, you know, if not in every meal, certainly in two meals a day and then veg makes a good snack in the afternoon and let's first of all establish that sort of a sense of a new normal and also we then need to make veggies exciting and approachable and, and fun. Yeah, but that's the aim, but how do you do it? How do you do it? I mean, you're the man who was part of the, the kind of advertising drive to get, I'm not, I'm not getting at you, Dan, because you have sort of uh, come to the other side of the fence, but, you know, it was your job for however many years to normalise burgers, to normalise fizzy pop, wasn't it? So how are you going to do that to, to, to replace those norms with new norms? Yes, I think part of it is about uh, looking at how veggies are presented in supermarkets so that they are perhaps more appealing. The veggie aisle is, is perhaps a little dull. We need to make it more exciting. We maybe need to make some of the packaging more exciting. We need to include veggies more in price promotions because they tend to get left out at the expense of the junk food. And then we also use, need to use advertising to, to get people's attention and maybe take them to digital environments where they can interact possibly with games or, or opportunities to learn and share and create things because in, for a lot of kids these days, they, they don't watch a great deal of traditional advertising. What they do is they, they engage with things and, and create things, and we can create vehicles that allow them to do that with vegetables. Right. Um, let me get Becca and Scott's uh, thoughts on that. I mm -hmm. think it's... Oh, sorry, go, Scott. 
Ladies first, go on, Becca. No, I was, Thanks, just, I was just thinking, it's all very good and well, but I think if this modern world of kids and, and so on, maybe we need to use their icons, you know, if Ronaldo was seen eating carrots, maybe that would make carrots cool and make kids, make them accessible to do those things rather than, you know, the big money that he gets paid to do things that are not quite as healthy. You know, make the, you know, if the Scotland squad um, promoted it to kids in schools and, you know, get it... Get it through their education. But we have a problem there, don't we? And Dan, you'll know this because you know where the money comes from. You know, you may have that big burger company that you worked for, you know, which is a global corporation, profit driven, obviously, um, and they know what their product is and they are selling it. You know, who's the equivalent carrot body, you know, or broccoli body, who, who's going to invest the same level of money to make carrots ubiquitous and give Ronaldo or whoever zillions to, to promote them? Well, I think, uh, I mean, first of all, we, we, we in some ways aspire to become that body by putting everybody together and representing vegetables and trying to get everybody excited about them. Because as you say, there's nobody to do it and the farmers, then, you know, they're on such thin margins, they don't have the money to do it. So hopefully we can bring people together and we can raise more money and we can make those kind of exciting things available. To some great extent, I doubt whether we'll ever have the budget for Ronaldo. Uh, but if he's listening, um, I would say, Ronaldo, type P's please into your search engine, give us a call and uh, offer us a for free. Um, and hopefully we'll get more people like that stepping up and realising that actually, as, as celebrities and as sports characters, they actually have a responsibility. And it's good if some of them step up and help. And we have got a few coming through and volunteering, and we hope to see more doing so. Yeah. Scott, what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think I echo what Dan's saying, but I think it's maybe today aiming for Ronaldo will maybe kind of start a bit more <laughs> uh, down to earth. I mean, let's get kids, let's get them out and about, get into farms in Perthshire, get them out in these strawberry farms in the summer, and get them coming up into places like our warehouses, depots, small trips. Yeah, just, you know, if you just give them the fruit and veg and say, look, let's try this, see what you think of it. And they might think, oh, this isn't too bad. <laughs> um, but it's, it's difficult to do that as well, health and safety in these kind of aspects. It's something you need to think about. How much of a of a significant factor do you think price is? Because whether it is true or not, that there is generally a feeling that fruit and veg is more expensive than some of the mm -hmm. junk foods that, that are there. So price does always come up in this conversation. Yeah, that's exactly the case. I mean, look at, especially if you go for homegrown produce, I mean, the price of something homegrown British will be more expensive than it is from abroad. And mums and dads aren't going to want their kids eating like South African apples and such like, and would they rather something maybe British or Scottish, which is a lot dearer, um, which made me put some off a wee bit. If we could try and reduce the price of homegrown produce, we'd maybe be able to get promote it a lot more. But it's a very difficult thing to do, is with the costs of doing that. Mm, yeah. Um, well, Dan, listen, very good luck in your uh, venture. I'm sure lots of people would uh, support you in doing it. I would certainly support you in <laughs> doing it, that, that's for sure. Um, and you do kind of wonder, as hopefully a responsible parent, where, where do you go wrong? You know, why can't I get you to eat vegetables? It's uh, incredibly difficult. Um, so, Dan, we're grateful for any help that you can give. Thank you. Um, and uh, thanks also to, to Becca Miller and to, to Scott McDonald. Thanks, Scott. And